Hello, and welcome to Animal Chat, an Alberta SPCA podcast where we talk about animal welfare, animal behavior, and animal protection. I'm Dan Coby, and thank you for listening and for being passionate about animals in our province. On this episode, we're talking about office dogs. Many businesses already have policies that allow animals to be brought to work. As we know, many people added pets to their families early in the pandemic, and since many people are now possibly returning to the office, we're here to suggest that businesses consider allowing dogs and or cats into their workplace. We acknowledge up front that this doesn't work in all workplace settings, but in environments where it does, research has shown numerous positive outcomes for those workplaces that allow pets. In fact, the United Nations, in its Sustainable Development Goals, specifically mentions working with animals or having pets at the workplace can enhance the work environment. Joining me today is Alberta SPCA office dog Bochi, and Bochi's person, Alberta SPCA Executive Director Tara Johnston, Tara and Bochi, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Dan. Bochi and I are delighted to be here today. I'm not sure if he's going to join in on the conversation, but he's definitely here and he's definitely made his presence known already. He has already tried out both the seats and uh, he is hoping that we brought some snacks. (laughs) I think he might be disappointed on that one. Bochi, we should uh, let you know, is a six-year-old sable Sheltie who sort of acts like he owns the place here. He's a big fan of treats and warm chairs and dislikes it when the mail is delivered or the big trucks on the street honk their horns. He's also very handsome and has the nickname of Glamour Boy from one of our staff members. Dan, let's be clear, uh, it's it's actually noisy little glamour boy, I think is more the term that is applied to Bochi because he can be noisy a little bit. He does let you know when somebody's at the door, for sure, with vigor to say. Yes. Now, Bochi is one of several dogs that come to the office. The newest member of the team are Farah, a whippet, and Ollie, a husky mixed breed. And then there are Nina, a Border Collie cross, Perry, who is very much a mutt. He's also deaf, but he is so good at sign language. And Louie, another mixed breed of many kinds who can bounce like Tigger. And I, I will say that, you know, these, uh, these wonderful dogs, Bochi counts as some of his very best buds. So he, he really has enjoyed his time with his buddies. And more recently, he's kind of missed his buddy because we haven't, buddies, because we hasn't seen as many as he has in the past, given the COVID uh, environment that we're working in. Okay, so we're an animal welfare organization, so it makes sense that we would have an open doggy door policy here. But why should businesses consider allowing staff to bring pets to the office, Tara? So, Dan, I I think, you know, I can really only speak to sort of the Albert SBC and the environment we we work in. But I would suggest that um, what we're seeing, the research backs up. Uh, We see um, sort of it reduces stress. Uh, I think that it, it, it promotes interactions with our staff. Um, It, I would suggest to you that it increases productivity. And for those staff that, you know, sometimes uh, maybe don't take a break, and we've got, believe it or not, we've got quite a few staff members who, you know, are passionate about the work. Um, they they sit in front of their, de- their computers and they work very, very hard. Sometimes it's harder to get them to take a break. And, um, you know, the, the need to get up and walk your dog or engage, Um, forces people to get up and take a bit of a break, which I think increases their productivity. So we're definitely seeing that that research piece and and the positive benefits from it. We're seeing that in our staff. And then with the pandemic, and you sort of mentioned that uh, we haven't had as many office dogs here over the past year and a half because we've had people working from home. Um, but we have seen in the past when everyone was here and, and most of the dogs were in, um, as you mentioned, you know, the, the daily, you know, 9.30 a.m. play time upstairs that we can all hear the dogs having just a great time. Yeah, and Bochi, I think, genuinely misses that time. Uh, so, you know, we haven't had as many um, staff and and interactions with the dogs and and the dogs haven't been able to sort of engage with each other more recently because of the COVID environment so I know I know Bochi has missed that um, 
but we are hoping that, you know, as fall comes and as we move towards sort of the, the, the bigger opening and inviting staff in that we'll start to see that. And I think, you know, one of the reasons that, you, you know, we talked about doing this particular podcast is we recognize that for so many people who have adopted or have invited uh, a dog or a cat into their home, they're going to be facing some um, difficult times, whether the dog is going to be facing or cat facing some difficult times or the human, their person, is going to be facing that. Um, that's why we want people to consider having pets in the office because it may reduce some of that anxiety and having to go back to work on a full-time basis. We're hoping, we're, you know, we, we have seen a very positive impact both prior to and we assume and hope and anticipate it will be as beneficial uh, post-COVID as it was pre-COVID. And I should mention that when, when the animals, Bochi uh, and the others, would, would play pre-pandemic, that typically the owners of all the dogs would hang out uh, with their cups of coffee and, and catch up on, on things. So as we talk about those positive employee connections that are happening when um, they're not necessarily just work-related, it's how was your weekend kind of thing. And, and you know, as we all... Uh, have a relationship with with each other. I think we're all happier and more productive. So um, we mentioned the research off the top, and I do want to say that we will have a link to that research in the show notes uh, part of our podcast on our website, just so people can read for themselves if they are seriously uh, thinking about allowing dogs in their workplace. So it's good to have dogs in the office, if appropriate for the business. But it's also important to have policies in place if you are going to allow cats or dogs in the workplace. And this is important. Not everyone is a lover of dogs or a lover of cats. So it's important to have the rules in place ahead of time so everyone is on the same page. Absolutely. And and before we, I I think we had started, you know, given given the work and uh, that we do and on occasion there are uh, dogs and other pets that come into the office not necessarily our own but sometimes uh, we have uh, other animals come in I think we recognize that there was an opportunity here and and so you know we didn't at the time um, have a very clear policy in place and I think as we grew to understand that this could be beneficial and there was a lot of upside to this. There was also some potential for, I wouldn't say downside, but other considerations to, to make. And so as part of that exercise in developing policies, we identified a pet policy committee and we developed some pretty stringent um, processes and policies that had to be in place before we could invite dogs uh, or, or pets. And I say or pets, it's in our office, it's typically dogs, although we have on occasion had uh, pet cats come in. We do have a member of our staff that has on occasion brought in her beloved cat who works um, and, and engages quite healthily with with his or her dog campaign, uh, companion. So that, that worked out quite well, but primarily it's dogs. And so, you know, when we developed this policy, we really looked at and considered all of the the good and I say the bad and the ugly if you will so you know we recognize that there were some I wouldn't say downside but certainly some considerations um, to be had and so with that we um, came prepared with appropriate policy uh, that's put in place before animals could could be brought in. Uh, I'm going to back up a little bit and just mention that Neville, the cat that does come in, was actually a host or a guest, sorry, on our podcast one time on uh, cat enrichment. So uh, if you want to see Neville on our on our website, you can find that episode. I also want to point out that uh, Bochi is completely bored with this conversation and is sighing in his sleep as he sits at our feet. All right, so policies are important. I, I, the, the most important one, and, and maybe this is the obvious one, but... Um, the pets who come to the workplace in all situations should have their vaccinations up to date and they should be licensed. Absolutely. And one of the other things that we, the vaccinations check, that's an absolute must and, and really gave that some consideration and, and what age, acknowledging that, that puppies are coming in too. So we've had a couple of staff more recently um, be part of the, the, the COVID um, 
uh, sort of group that has secured or, or adopted new pets in their in their for, the, for their households and their life. Um, so you know those uh, puppies have come in as well, and so we want to make sure that we're we're inviting them in um, at at an appropriate age where they've been vaccinated, so that their vaccination status is is managed, so that they're not at risk. Um, so that's a really important one. You you talk about. Um, that but also having uh, identification is really really important we all know who our dogs are but if for some reason one of our beloved pets got out of the office we want to make sure that they're appropriately um, uh, th they have appropriate id and so that that's a that's a, a no-brainer for most people anyways but we certainly made it very clear in our policy that that it was a must-have we must have a id with phone number for uh, in case something happened. And I think it also goes without saying that the pets have to be spayed or neutered. No office hanky-panky, even with the animals. <laughs> there is none of that going on in this office. Absolutely none of that. <laughs> um, although the, the animals are a little um, amorous from time to time. But, they, but they, they all have been fixed, obviously. Yes. Yeah, that's a natural play. Dan, come on. <laughs> it makes us all laugh when it happens. Uh, there, are, okay. So there are some other rules um, for the pets that come here. Um, the pets must be under control at all times. Um, we have designated play times so that it's not nonstop running up and down the hallways uh, chasing balls. Um, we have a designated biology break area outside so there's no chance of there being um, missed uh, poop outside uh, the building outside the front door that's well removed um, but if your pet does happen to make a mess inside owner has to clean it up it's no one else's responsibility um, and we don't allow pets in the kitchen area um, that's a area where people can go to prepare their food without having to worry about animals yeah, I mean, we've we've tried to think of both humans and dogs when it comes to this, and so, you know, I, I don't think any of the, um, the the rules, if you will, or guidelines would would take anyone by surprise. They're just they're just you know being respon being a responsible pet owner, and um, I, I think the other thing, and I you know I speak a little bit from experience. Bochi is as you identified a a sable sheltie which they come from a herding background so he likes to herd people and pets and cats and children and any cars if you allowed him so he he tends to herd people in and out and so it's really my responsibility to try and check that behavior and not make sure and to make sure pardon me that um, he's not being disruptive um, in any way shape or form and um, in addition um, I think it goes back to the way we introduced him, which was Glamour Boy, but I, you know, corrected you in saying that one of our staff members calls him the noisy little Glamour Boy, and he can be disruptive. So it's incredibly important that, that I am mindful of that and take steps to mitigate that at all points. And the obvious thing, I guess, too, is, you know, any sort of... Um, aggressive behavior although we are very fortunate as an organization in in with our office dogs that there there isn't uh, dog aggression um, because we've taken steps to socialize our dogs with people and other dogs so it, it's not generally an issue that's bochi by the way he's doing something he's being disruptive i believe is the word i would like to say i think he's trying to find a nice place to lie down on the carpet and it's not sorry bochi the carpet's not getting any fluffier no than if you scratch no it. we're just not meeting his needs but um yeah so it's really important that we all are responsible and and take steps to mitigate any sort of offside behavior and um you know the other thing that i i think as an organization we've been very mindful of and, and again i think it's relatively it, it's much easier for our agency given the fact that we're animal related and it wouldn't surprise anyone who is applying to uh, be a member or as a staff member of this organization that allergies might be an issue so um, if it is an issue it might be an issue for them so it's it's certainly sort of a, a, a full disclosure 
sure that we do invite animals and do occasionally have animals. Even if we didn't invite them in, we have them. So those are considerations too that we, we ensure that people are aware that, you know, allergies could be an issue. And also, um, again, just ensuring that they're, they manage their, their dog if they are disruptive or aggressive in any, any way, shape or form. And, and uh, you know, that being said, I, I think that, um, you know, being allowed to bring your dog in or pet in to the organization is an incredible perk. It's a, an incredible privilege. And I think our staff see that. I think, you know, we talk about the well-being of, 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 of us and the well-being of our dogs, but it's such a, a wonderful um I don't know if I would say an opportunity, but it's it's wonderful to not have to worry about, you know, leaving my dog at home, staying long hours at, at work if, if that's sometimes required, and, and having to worry about bio breaks and, and being able to manage that. I don't have to worry about that when my dog's at home. I can manage it here. And so it's such an incredible perk. Um, and so we all get that. We also acknowledge that there's other people who come into the office that are a little fearful of dogs. And I'm talking about people that come to visit us or people that come to the door. So we are very mindful of that. And that, that goes to the dog under control piece and making sure that that's managed appropriately. So, you know, there's, I say the, the good, the bad and the ugly. I don't think any of it's bad. It's just, it has to be managed probably a, a good time to do the mea culpa that when uh, when my dog was one of the office dogs charlie has since passed but when i first started um charlie very smart dog i had no trouble figuring out how to get into the kitchen did not matter if <laughs> i left her out of the kitchen it was a swinging door and she was coming in um uh, so they are challenging right what 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 i wanted and what charlie wanted we're not the same thing. We're not, yes. But, you know, Charlie was um, one of Bochi's favorites and they played and ripped around on a frequent basis. And Charlie was so, I, I know this isn't sort of about Charlie, but she was so wonderful because she would just, um, she'd bark a little bit and then she'd calm right down. Like she was just, you could, you could manage her relatively easy, whereas Bochi, not so much. I, I mean, he's that noisy dog that's sometimes a little hard to manage, but, but, ah, oh, Charlie was just delightful. Well, nice of you to say that about Charlie. She, um, we didn't need anyone ringing the doorbell when Charlie was here because she let us very loudly know when, when visitors had arrived. And, and she was such a gentle soul, but, you know, people who did not know her did not necessarily know that. So she was also, uh, yeah, she was a pretty good guard dog. Yeah. She's pretty she, awesome. She uh, she also played mother hen to all the other dogs. She when 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 Ollie, who is one of our newer members, uh, the husky uh, mixed breed, arrived, uh, Ollie was a puppy, and most of the other office dogs were unsure of this strange new dog, except Charlie, who was the mom and loved being the mom. That's such a wonderful way of putting unsure. Bochi didn't like Ollie. Let's let's call it what it was. Ollie was way cuter and way more adorable and Bochi he, he wasn't out for that that was not his jam right then I yeah. don't think it was just Bochi though <laughs> <laughs> there were there were a few of the office dogs who weren't quite sure what to make of this 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 new cute puppy who was in the office um, so we know having pets in the office or having them there all the time may not work for a lot of businesses, obviously. Um, but there are ways to enjoy the benefits of having pets at work on sort of a, a, a part-time basis, if you will, um, such as having, you know, designated bring your pet to work days, whether it be once a month or once a year. But that's a, a good way to um, find out if, if your office maybe a place where people can bring pets. Yeah, just introduce the concept and see how it goes over with um, with your staff and and whether it's something that can reasonably work from a productivity and, and sort of other sort of um, really important things to making sure that the work still gets done. So yeah, I think uh, to my mind, that's that's a great way to do it is just introduce it, try it out, see the benefits hopefully, and and go from there. 
and on our website, uh, and we'll have a link to this as well on the show notes. Uh, we did actually talk to some folks from a, an Edmonton business who have an annual bring their dog to work day and, and lots of photos, and um, and they just love it, right? It, it, their productivity on that one day is probably not great, but it certainly brings the whole team together. So uh, lots of ways to try to include animals in the workplace because we, don't, we know um, that animals tend to bring out the best in us most of the time. I, I, yeah, it, they really do. There, there's something. It, it's a, it's a, as we pointed out, it, it brings out social interactions. It's an opportunity to chat, watch, share, listen, um, inform on any number of things. And um, I, I truly think. I, I mean, I'm biased because I get to bring a dog in. I get to see the benefits, um, and so may, may, maybe, maybe. Maybe I'm biased, but I, I would suggest that our our staff, uh, you know, do see this as a perk, do enjoy it. And as I mentioned, you know, given the COVID environment, it's going to be tough slugging for those who have to come back on a full-time basis, who are now leaving their beloved pet, who they were with on a full-time basis. So maybe the time is now, maybe, maybe trying it out a day a week or every other week is the way to do it. I, I strongly encourage and, and really encourage um, employers to see that. I, I think it also sets employers apart from others. I mean, it's, uh, I think from a staff retention perspective, I think from a sort of creating, differentiating your employee, uh, your, your organization from others is it, this is a great way to do it. So I'm talking about some of the benefits to the employer. Um, and I, I, I think they're there. I think they're, it's a win for employers, for employees, and most definitely and most importantly for the animals. And we, even th- despite the fact that we're uh, an SPCA, an animal welfare organization, we still see the benefits. I know I do. Um, and, and I'm going to say this because we had a visitor uh, pop in, in the office today named uh, Casper, who uh, had been lost for three weeks and someone found him and brought him to us. And then we were able to help connect him back with his owner, which was fantastic. Um, but if you're having if you're having a stressful day at the office, if you're not feeling great, if you're feeling... Um, you know, like you're not feeling very social with your coworkers for whatever reason, like the dogs are great. And, and Casper would just come in and, and he loved the attention and I throw him a few treats and, and he didn't really actually eat the treats. He not, wasn't food motivated for a dog that had been lost for three weeks, but he, um, but, it, but it's therapeutic is, is, is what I'm trying to say. And, uh, um, you know, I, I experienced that with Casper, but, you know, Bochi, as you often note, likes hanging out in my office and, and he, uh, he acts as my therapy dog as well. Not just, uh, he's not just yours. He belongs to the office when he's here. He, uh, yeah, he is, I, I will confirm, um, Dan's office is one of the favorite hangouts for all dogs, actually, not just Bochi. Um, it seems to be a favorite spot for, and I'm not sure why. I mean, and that, that isn't, boy, that, that didn't sound very good, did it, Dan? I, you know, Bochi likes your seat. He likes to hang out with you. I think he, he just, and, and you do feed him. I will, I will sh- say you do feed him. But, but Ollie loves your office and she does, you don't feed her. You just, he just likes to hang out there because you're, you're one of them cool cats. Yeah, she uh, she hangs out under my desk. Uh, that's her safe place. And if uh, stranger danger comes to the door, Ollie, where Bochi meets it head on, yeah. bouncing off the glass of the door, Ollie will go hide under my desk. And, you know, that might be a leftover from Charlie because they like hanging out with Charlie in the office. And so maybe they, they still experience that. Um, you know, this is, uh, I think, probably the most fun podcast yeah. episode that we've done because we get to talk about our dogs um, and uh, everyone loves to do that. Uh, it's not just about showing pictures. It's about telling their experiences and, and it's, it's a, it is a lot of fun having dogs in the office. Um, uh, it does and bring cats. Us, and cats. cats. And, and Neville when he does come yeah. in. Yeah, and we have visitor cats as well. Yeah. Um, and we had a visitor tortoise one time I'm as well. just going to say, the and a parrot. Yes. We had, yes, we yeah. had a parrot. Uh, and and, the, and the, the dogs were kind of okay with the tortoise. Yeah. <laughs> Tolerant, for yeah, sure. Yeah, didn't they, didn't they quite know them. what to do, but yeah. Yeah, it's a, it, it, it is a, I would say, you mentioned it's a bit of a perk. I would say it's a significant perk that people get to bring their animals in, or for those of us who aren't bringing dogs in anymore, just to get to hang out with the dogs. So Yeah. It's a... Uh, 
great podcast episode. Um, we obviously uh, will have pictures of um, the various office dogs and, and some extra information and links to the research uh, on our uh, episode page on our website, albertaspca.org slash news slash podcasts. Tara and Bochi, thank you so much for coming in today. Thanks, Dan. Delighted to be here. If you liked this episode of Animal Chat, we invite you to listen to our episode on myths about dog training. You can find it on our website, albertaspca.org slash news slash podcasts, or on whatever site you found this episode on. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.